Lily Ant managed to do work was boxing him in those really close ranges, just like quick down tilt, quick forward air, you know, those sorts of things. So, oh, all right, starting off the game pretty strong with 28%. Like, the damage is actually, I feel, going to sit for the most part in numbers' favor. Where a lot of this matchup goes kind of nutty is the offstage play. The last time that I saw these two play in this situation was... Numbers kind of having the lead in the first couple of games, and then Chris completely reversing all of that back onto Numbers, especially when it came to playing off stage. Controlling the ledge is going to be pivotal for Chris. And as a reminder, we're in Grand Finals, folks. Only three games does Chris need in order to seal the deal. Numbers needs to reset that bracket. Oh, that's another thing oh, about but the matchup. He was forced to up B, so he didn't quite get the uber kill. But nonetheless, that's still solid damage. I mean, PK Chris is already sitting at 116%. And, oh, he's having to recover. He winds up going past the ledge. That's just barely surviving that. He can't take another one of those. You know, uh... Down air definitely going to be the number to play for numbers in this uh, matchup because it's going to force Chris at a really awkward angle where more often than not he can't get himself back to stage. I think that was maybe a bit of suboptimal or like maybe a flush movement from numbers. It seemed like a very strange way to pressure uh, to get Chris off the ledge after getting back thrown on his way back. And now he needs to find a way to actually take this stock here. Uh, he's fine. Numbers, what are you doing? You are oh, so fine. deep, but I guess his arms are long enough. If that was any angle besides the one that goes directly up, I think he might have died. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and that's dead. No, it's, no it's not. Wow. Wow. Okay, that's yep. Yeah. We can do it again though. Oh no! And you die for it. Yeah, no, that's Ness off stage with Battlefield. You have to be mindful that because the stage gives so much room for Ness to play around off stage, PK Thunder into the wall, rebound, and still have ample amount of space to shoot PK Thunder in a way that lets him reposition. It's never just safe to down air like that. You do have to be very mindful of where you position those aerials. And it's a situation that's leaving numbers in a pretty heavy stock deficit. Oh, that's gonna be so much damage. Oh, that's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's dead. You used the wrong button, buddy. <laughs> yeah, Numbers <laughs> is just like, listen, if it had worked, <laughs> you wouldn't be laughing if it had killed you. I'm just saying. We just watched a bit. Die to PK Flash in the year 2021. <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think I've seen that move kill twice in like my entire Smash career. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing this since like 2014. <laughs> like, <sighs> that move well, don't kill. <laughs> Alright, well now we're moving into game two here. Same stage, I definitely agree with that. I think the stage itself is fine. And <clears throat> the beginning of the game worked out really well for numbers. Uh, the issue is, oh, I need to get the kill now. Uh, Who needs to get the kill? Chris needs to get the kill. Chris needs to get the kill. Down and get the kill, and just like that, Chris got a really solid lead coming to the game two. That's, that's, that's life with Ness at the legs for you. Yeah? Um, yeah. Sorry. That, that's going <laughs> to take a few seconds to recover from it. Numbers, though, didn't need any time to recover. He actually went right back into things swinging. Able to get up some damage, but... You know, it's, as animated as Numbers is uh, when he's playing, he, he does actually have really strong like, mental stamina when it comes to this game. And I feel like when you play the way that Numbers does, you have to just have that wherewithal to just fight through anything, shenanigans included. But... Chris is not making it easy for him by any stretch. Yeah, and I think I said, oh, Battlefield seems like a good stage. One thing Battlefield is doing for PK Chris, those PK fire angles. It is, oh, he's dead. That's we it. We are once again, but Chris died for it, too. I mean, yeah, Chris is, of course, going to be okay with that, though. Now Numbers has to fight from a just a clean two stock to one deficit. Can he do it? This isn't even his main. <laughs> I think he's going to need some type of really big edge guard. He's looking to well, set up down air can do it if he's timed right, and that's also worth keeping in mind. If he times that reflector just right, he can either send PK Thunder away, or he could just send Chris away. One or the other, but it's a high-risk, high-reward gambit because we've seen it happen when Numbers doesn't have his spacing pristine. Yeah, 
Yeah, these wind tornadoes being able to actually put in a ton of work for Gon right now. Oh, gets the air dodge. He doesn't actually get the punish, though. Oh, that grab whiff. Oh, the yes, no situations. You got popped right back up and almost right into the back. And this is, I will also just say, getting comebacks on Ness is so hard to do because of how just consistent <laughs> his kill power is. Oh, Chris is so cheeky for it. No back air, though. Too short. Once again, down air is not going to do it. It's such a good option that because of the angle it will send Chris at, it makes all the sense in the world. These are beautiful texts, by the way, to constantly reset this stage state. Oh, another one of them. He's yeah, not no, missing he's... those, bro. Does me Sword Fighter have a counter? As he does. It's not good, though. Is it good enough uh, to deal with? Couldn't answer you... that. Every Sword Fighter player I've ever spoken to does not like it. But specifically for PK Thunder, I, would it not even work? I know that a lot of counters just don't. Yeah, most of the counters, they just work by virtue of like sitting in the way of PK Thunder and to that value, maybe. But again, every Sword Fighter player I've ever spoken to just doesn't like it. <laughs> That's true, and I think he gives up the reflector, right? For taking that one? Yeah, it's a, it's a down B option, so you would have to drop the reflector. And the yeah. other down B option is like dollar store. Uh, Falcon kick is the best way I could describe it. It's not good in the slightest. Yeah. Okay, and there it is. That's the problem with playing against Nash. He can play perfectly, perfectly, but his kill options, there's just so many of them between back air, neutral air, forward tilt out ledge, throwing the opponent like PK. At, at, at higher percents, almost every single thing he will graze you with will end up leading to your death. Uh, numbers, I don't think we're going to be seeing any type of counter pick in terms of character. I'm actually, I feel like, so if we're going back to Battlefield, um, I think that Numbers needs to just deal with those PK Thunders, uh, sorry, the PK Fires a lot better. Maybe you like trying to time Reflectors, or maybe just don't get hit by them. It, it's one of those, it's such a hard option because like you would either have to run away or jump over it. And if you're in the air with Ness and you don't plan on actually pressing a button onto Ness, he's going to combo you. Uh, Chris has shown that multiple times. If you just run away, well, then you run back to the ledge. At which case, Chris has shown multiple times that he's very comfortable with this battle at the ledge and off stage. Oh, the spacing from numbers. That, that, oh, again with the PK fires. As soon as one of them lands, you know it's going to be a lot of damage. But nonetheless, it feels like numbers playing around the dash attack very well. Which could be very relevant for kill percents. The fact that Ness's dash attack kills was such a major buff that they gave him recently. Uh, and so if Numbers is able to effectively play around that, you know, when it comes to those kill percents, that could be pretty good. <laughs> Once again, batting back Gale Tornado. Not going to do too much afterwards, but good presence of mind with Numbers to actually block at this time. Numbers not trying to go off stage again. <laughs> nah, he's learned his lesson. You touch the stove enough times, you learn that it's hot. All right, plenty of projectiles. None going to actually be covering numbers. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm just like, ow, PK Thunder, hot. <laughs> Maybe this time if I touch it, he won't PK Thunder back to the stage. Okay, we're now, I like, really like this. The down tilt in neutral is so good. And it, oh, but, oh, and he knew he was just going to air dodge out. Almost everyone loves to just drift outwards, air dodge out, SDI out, whatever you yeah. want to do to PK Fire, you just have to drift out for the record. But there, pressing that air dodge ended up being a disaster, and ooh, a late Dude. reflector, finally getting a chance to see what you were talking about. Oh, and now we're at this point where he needs to be taking his stock and even getting him into that juggle situation and felt like PK Chris had all of this room to go. In the end, though, really interesting. I believe that was the forward tilt coming out to take the stock. Uh, and oh, no jump. Okay, he's fine. Numbers opting to play the ledge right off the uh, beginning of the stock. Very interesting. It makes sense for Numbers, but given that Chris has consistently been able to rack up plenty of damage by forcing Numbers at the ledge and off stage, very bold call. I was just about to say that Numbers is really getting hit by uh, PK Fire in the same way that he was earlier. But oh, he's getting hit by all these other moves nonetheless. And he gets these little hits. But these hits don't really lead to that much. You know, the juggles aren't really coming in for him. So, you know, he's winning neutral. I'd say about even with PK Chris right now. 
but like he's at 110 if you get Chris at 40. One thing I want to highlight super quick is the fact that Chris very consistently goes for parries, and he's like been known for that for like a while. He's on Long Island, <laughs> if not all of New York has seen it. But here, it's really important because you don't want to be stuck blocking Gale Tornado because that's valuable time that Numbers needs to move forward and threaten further Gale Tornadoes or throws. Just like that, one of which is going to find the mark into up air. Start to make this game look a little bit better for Numbers. Oh, that up tilt. We haven't really seen it as an anti-air option yet. And oh, these are options that we hadn't really seen until this game here. And there it is, what you were talking about. The reversal. Numbers managing to keep himself alive. Bring us to a game four right now. But he's going to need to repeat that success two more times just to reset the bracket on PK Chris's counter pick stage. I'm actually, what do you think we're going to see? Battlefield as the counter pick. Yep, just run right on back. So I, the, the first time that I saw Numbers play this, oh, I'm actually curious to see what's happening. Okay, you just wanted to change the music up? Okay, okay. Uh, much love to Numbers for sticking us in the Persona music realm. Big Was fan. that Numbers who did that? Yeah, Numbers okay. is the one who made it battle him of the soul, and he, now we have uh, he's a, time to make history. Epicurean. Patrician taste, as they say. <laughs> Truly goaded, gentlemen. <laughs> so, the pick into the battlefield makes a lot of sense because even though it's supposed to be a good stage for Sword Fighter, it's also a good stage for Ness. Now, at this point in the game, I feel like both of these players have showcased why this stage is so good for either. But also, take into consideration, there's no real reason for Chris to adjust too much to the current game state. He's been winning really hard so far. There's only numbers scratching by with that last game, where it really started to shake a little bit. Chris almost closed this out on a 3-0 tonight, but Numbers ain't gonna give it to him that easily. Yeah, and I do think that one of the big things why Numbers started winning that last game was, oh, is he dead? You're dead for that, and that's a really good pickup for Chris because he's recognized time after time, Numbers loves landing with down air. Oh! Wow, oh, but just barely not enough damage, and there's the reflector again, turning him around. Yeah, all right, Numbers starting to come alive here, and he's not falling for the same stuff that was really dooming him in that game uh, one and two. Namely, he's not just getting aerial PK fired quite nearly as much. Yeah, no, both of these players forced to showcase their fluidity in neutral as they've been forced to adjust to each other. I think Numbers has done a really good job of adjusting to the aerial play that Chris presents and trying to check him out of it. Oh. Reverse up smash, bit of an interesting call. I feel like forward smash might have been the play there. Which, as a note, we haven't seen from Chris yet as an option. I think we saw it exactly once and it whipped. Uh, we saw it once to reflect. I think. Twice to reflect, actually. But not really much beyond that. And now, 140%. Numbers looking for this kill. It's, just, it's so hard to, like, try and not die against Ness at these higher percents. But it seems like he has a good, decent job figuring out exactly which option PK Chris is going to be going for. Oh, and just barely managed to whiff. He's going to mess out of the ground and take a forward thrown. A great set position for numbers, but it's going to get turned around completely by Chris. Oh, and there are those aerial PK fires that Numbers had been managing to avoid, and a single one of them leads to 35%. And considering the fact he's on his last stock, here might be his last stock of the entire oh, tournament. Oh, forget. Every one of those hits really hurts. Forget the damage. It's the positioning that's ridiculous for Chris. After one interaction, we went from one ledge to the other with Chris in total control. And he's still following through, scaring Numbers into burning his jump and then catching the landing regardless. Numbers needs to take this stock right now. Ooh, that was cute. All right. He's going to go. Yeah. But oh, but he saves and he's forced to. And that's what happened on the very first stock of this set. And potentially what's happening here on the last as Chris is on the hunt with the back air and he finds his mark. A 3-1 victory for Chris from Winner's Side Grands as he takes tonight's encore. That's the second encore he's taken and this one even more dominant.